they bring you bitterness, but instead of bringing them or giving them bitterness, you give them sweetness. Mm. They bring you harshness, mm. but you bring them meekness. Mm. Come on, read. It reads, bless those who curse you. Wait a minute! Bless those that bless you, yeah, but also bless those <laughs> that curse you. <laughs> That call you out of your name. Mm -hmm. Bible said, bless him. Mm -hmm. Because after a while, if you keep blessing, the blessing is going to outweigh their cursing. What I simply mean by that is that you keep being sweet and meek. It's going to dry up the hardness. Therefore, the text tells us, bless them, even though they're cursing you. Mm. Don't you curse them that curse you. You bless them that curse you. Mm. This is not natural, okay? This is not ordinary. <laughs> this is not natural, but it is supernatural. This will fix the problem. Please read further. It reads, pray for those who mistreat you. Wait a minute! People that are mistreating you, pray for them. I want you to know that just because they're going to hell, you don't have to treat them that way. <laughs> Be pleasant, virtuous, and good. But there's something that I need to clarify. God is a God of kindness. I want you to understand, and you've heard the saying, that you can draw a whole lot more honeys, oh, excuse me, bees, with honey, all right? And God, he's putting out the honey now. The honey is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he's offering the kindness. But you must understand this, that there is a consequence for not responding to the kindness. That there is a penalty. It is the kindness of God that has brought salvation to men and women and the world. But if you don't respond to this kindness, this kindness, And there is a severity of the penalty. Kindness does not mean that God gives you an eternal pass. I want you to know just as heaven is real, hell is also real. No response to his kindness has consequences. It has consequences. Get Mark 9 and 48. It reads, where their worm does not die. Jesus is talking about hell. Where the worm or the maggot, it doesn't die. 
Come on, read it. And the fire is not quenched. And the fire won't even go out. Some people say that there's no hell. How could a loving God put anybody in hell? But you need to respond while the honey's out. Mm. Because after a while, the honey is going to be gone. Mm. And you're going to have to respond to the one on the throne. Mm. I want you to understand that sin has wages. There is a payment for sin. Get Romans 3 and 23. Autumn, get James 1 and 15. And it reads, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Every last one of us is guilty. All of us have missed the mark. We've been imperfect. And I thank God for Jesus. He's the one that frees us. Come on, read it. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory sinned, of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Yes. And it says... Romans 3 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. And if we look at that word in the Greek wages, it means payment, but another understanding of that word is to consider it like rashings for a soldier. Or or imagine, in other words, you're cooking up something. And in each of our lives, we're making something. And whatever we're making or cooking, one day we're going to have to partake of it. And either it's going to be bitterness that leads to death, or the sweetness of eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So what are you cooking? Are you cooking up something that leads to death? Or you're cooking up something that leads to life? Mm. Because I'm telling you, it's leading somewhere to some place. Yes. God has this kindness. This kindness is, is sort of like, it's sort of like the, you, you see it in the movies where they, they, they like when E.T., when they wanted him to follow, they put the Reese's Pieces down. <laughs> and he followed up. That's how kindness is. It's to lead you where you need to go. But to reject the kindness and to follow another path is leading to another place. Read James 1 and 15. Let's talk about where it's leading. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. All right. It's leading to death. It's leading to separation from God. And lastly, where are you going to lift up your eyes? Get Luke 16 and 23. Luke 16 and 23. There's two places that you can lift up your eyes. Either in hell or towards heaven. Come on, what does it say, man? Luke 16 and 23 reads, In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away. In hell, he lifted up his eyes. 
But then in John 17 and 1, we see that Jesus lifts up his eyes towards heaven. So I just want to stress to you there is a reality of penalty. God has given his kindness. And we are also to give the kindness so that people can recognize the ultimate kindness that's given through God, through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. And how you respond determines where you lift up your eyes. Mm. And if I keep lifting up my eyes, now I saw a balloon go up the other day. Mm -hmm. After a while, I had to lift up my head. And when we lift up our eyes, eventually we have to lift up our heads. Mm -hmm. And we enter into a celebration mode. As it says in Psalm 24 and 7, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors of the King of glory, come in. That's all God wants to do is come in. Mm. That's all he wants to do is come in. Mm. Be kind for God's state of mind. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. I am so satisfied. I